Hey, good evening, everyone. We are live and on the air. We're going to give everybody just a moment uh, to get in here. And um, in the meantime, I'm going to tag our uh, uh, our panel. And Facebook is still kind of goofy uh, in that um, I can't just out and out tag anyone. I got to do it a special way. But anyway, it's okay. We'll uh, make it happen. So yeah, uh, good to see everybody uh, that's chiming in. Uh, good to see. Uh, Tarzi Martin joining us uh, this evening uh, all the way from the uh, Malaysia area and the Borneo Island um, and uh, uh, looks like um, let's see here. yeah okay so but anyway uh, good to see David Jacobs joining us this, uh, this evening uh, Dr. Faye is joining us this evening although she will be uh, doing her she's got a class that's due uh, Mary Hall is listening uh, we appreciate all of you so very 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 much and um, uh, last week we got uh, things stirred up and let me just say welcome everybody to as he is so are we um, as you know um, I'm dr. Bill and I have my panel with me um, uh, Apostle Brett Erickson there's uh, dr. Cindy Coates that's uh, joining in. Uh, good to see uh, up Chaplain Shane Gabbert uh, uh, with with us tonight in the chat room. He recently uh, had a, a, lo a, a tragic loss of a loved one, and um, he's back, and that's that's done. But um, he's going to be with me Friday on my uh, show Thursday. Apostle Brett Erickson is going to be with me. And uh, so, uh, hey, there's Pastor Christopher Anderson that's jumping in right now. And so, looks like uh, looks like uh, Noah's Ark. We're gonna have a full boat. So <laughs> that was that was kind of a corny joke. Uh, but anyway, I'm I'm better at those than I am the good ones. So I go with corny. Okay. So good to see Pastor Christopher. Uh, jumping in here and um, so uh, yeah so let me go back to where I was we we kind of got the pot stirred sure. last week uh, in this uh, brand new topic talking about uh oh uh, that that must be for the California Angels um, no way. <laughs> uh, uh, Alabama no I, I think way. <laughs> I, I think uh, Forrest Gump was from uh, uh, Alabama so yeah okay so anyway good to have our panel with us we're in part two of a question is physical death a part of father's plan for us and um, I remember asking uh, my mom one time I said if you could wouldn't you like to live forever and uh, she said no <laughs> absolutely not and uh, so I think people get what they believe for, what they declare. Uh, my my thing is, did I catch this in enough time? Although it was late in life, uh, the fact is, until that point, uh, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to focus on uh, the immortality that I think God has promised us. So let's let's be honest tonight. No one wants to think about physical death. Uh, here's why people die every day around us okay we have loved ones die both of my parents I have two brothers that are gone um, uh, different people uncles and grandparents that are gone and it's not a fun thing uh, to deal with but let, let's think about this I want to I want us to look tonight just just here's what we're considering we're considering uh, eternal truth now eternal truth from father's own mind you know it's not something that just you just see every day but it's something that that you know I've been studying today about Joshua since I'm finishing up chapter 5 tomorrow uh, one of the things that happened to Joshua Joshua always did question his uh, his calling and his destiny uh, whether he could fill the shoes of Moses would the people of Israel accept him or not and although they affirmed that again and again and again still he's just about to 
take Jericho, he's looking over the city, and he's actually questioning within himself, am I really able to do this? And the cloud of witnesses appear to him and give him a confirming word. Sometimes that's exactly where we're at. Uh, and that, that, that word was a final revelation of who he was and something that is really almost new covenant but it's really pre-creation uh, happened in that moment and I'll be talking about that tomorrow. So uh, I, w I wanted to mention something just to get our panel stirred in a direction and I actually posted this online. Uh, I talked about uh, just because a car accident happens does not mean car accidents are God's idea. Now, I know there are people who believe that God causes car accidents. Can I, I just want to tell you something. Everyone listening tonight and everyone who will hear this video at some time, uh, an hour or, uh, a, a, or a year in the future, uh, car accidents are not from God. Let, let me take this approach. Uh, just because sickness happens does not mean that that sickness was something God did to keep mankind humble. As a matter of fact, you can go all the way back to Exodus 15 uh, to uh, see when, when God uh, brought a covenant, uh, established a covenant of healing, and uh, the first time that you'll see uh, Jehovah uh, Rapha uh, appearing in Scripture. Um, and, and, so, uh, and there's a whole other story to that. Uh, and so likewise, just because death happens, uh, and it happens daily, does not mean that God created death. So what we got to think about is this, that the death concept was created from within the belief system. You understand everything that's going on in this world. God may have planted some ideas by putting his mind in us, but we really confirmed and reaffirmed ideas that sometimes are like God's mind and sometimes are not like God's mind. And so this death thing has really got me stirred because I see so many people dying. Uh, you know, like I said, when my dad went, uh, I heard my dad speak from the other side and said he realized that he could have stayed. He didn't have to die. Well, that's an, uh, an awakening that's a little bit too late. Uh, but the thing is, we established belief systems, and, and, and the death concept was created from within the belief system of the first human form of mankind, which was Adam. So, as we talk about this tonight, everybody watching, I mean, wh whether you agree or disagree, I'm, I'm asking you, don't get off, don't quit, don't give up, don't say that's just too much for me. Stay and listen, because we're sharing some information and, and just having some conversation just to stir up our thinking toward this uh, idea of uh, what is death? Do, is it really something we have to go through? See, mankind embraced death as a natural course of life and has believed in its power in reality as a must for us. But I want to remind everybody once again, we're not going to stay here, but just, just to go back here for one time, uh, Romans 5 verse 14 in the Passion Translation says, yet death reigned, and the, the footnotes a preface temporarily as king from Adam to Moses, even though they hadn't broken a command the way Adam had. The first man, Adam, was a picture or an imprint, something that put an imprint on humankind, uh, and, and it, but it was also an imprint of the Messiah who was to come. So here we see Adam, and I, I, really, I really don't think that Adam was a type of Christ because Adam fell, Christ didn't, God didn't create you to fail or to fall in any way, shape, or form. But there was an imprint left in humanity of the first man that embraced the death concept. Now, even if uh, I am labeled a heretic and uh, a, a false prophet, I'm not asking anyone watching tonight to embrace the uh, life as uh, an immortality, uh, although Paul taught that to Timothy in the scriptures. What I'm asking you to do is listen to these perspectives, these points of view, and see if just maybe, just maybe, you can stop believing that death is a must and begin to live life to the fullest measure. I think that's a, such an important thing. All right, um, Apostle Brett, uh, glad to have you tonight. Um, What's your thoughts, man? I mean, this is a wild topic. I feel like I'm just supposed to make it, you know, have a cup of hot cocoa or right here and sit <laughs> by the campfire type of deal and, 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 and just make this 
okay, you know, um, because before I got on this show, hi everyone, I just wanted to act like I'm, I'm with you, I'm with your library, I'm there at the fire with y'all, and thank, <laughs> thank God we can, we can see each other in that, that light. I'm glad you guys are all here. It sure makes it a lot better. So, anyway, when that, you know, I was, I, I talked to Dr. Bill a little bit before this, and I said to my daughter, honey, would you like to live forever? You know, and I wish I would have taught her right from the beginning, but she's like, I said, she's like, no. And she's just kind of said, I said, why? She said, uh, you know, that's just not something I really, really would care to do. And I'm like, okay, so whatever, here we go. And then I had thought about what about people that have got on, got on death row? Maybe if they, you know, they've heard this message before, before that. Um, that we had responsibility and accountability to something. And, mm -hmm. you know, the grace message is there is no accountability in a sense. But as we were talking, he said, that's kind of a distorted message. And that's starting to hit me a little bit. But I don't want to get legalistic on him. So I want to go to Ephesians 2. Uh, Ephesians 2, 1, and I could bring it up on the screen real quick, which is amazing. It, it really brings it. I don't have to unless Dr. Bill wants me to. But the New King James Version, or the King James Version says, um, and you are being dead in the trespasses and in the sins of you. It's actually, we know the scripture. Um, and you being dead in trespasses and sins, um, <laughs> in which you once walked according to the age of this, of the world, and of this according to the ruler of the authority of the air, the spirit, which among them also we all live once in the desires of the flesh of us doing this things will. Okay, so I wanna go back and I wanna read this quick in the, the mirror Bible and it co back, comes back down to sin or hamart, hamart, harmatia, which we know that is a, you know, a form or a missing of the mark. Um, we can say sin was missing of the mark. Harmatia goes back into, um, you know, like Dr. K talks about it's mistaken identity. And so where were we and we, where, why did this identity come upon us? Was it a, a willed God uh, being willed? We've talked about this a little bit. Maybe he lost himself to find himself or, or descended into the flesh man. God de descended into the flesh man to experience it uh, itself uh, through energy. And even in this part, oh my gosh, um, in the mirror Bible, uh, it says, it says, picture where God found us, where, where we were in a death trap of inferior lifestyle, constantly living below the blueprint measure of our lives. The word sin here is the word hamatia, from ha, the negative and without marrows. It is a portion of form. It's just a portion of form. Thus to be without your allotted portion. And so then it talks about in um, Ephesians 2, 4, um, yeah, where is this? This is so good. We were all part of a common pattern swept along under by a powerful invisible influence, a spirit energy that adopts us, us as sons to its dictates through unbelief. And that's Ephesians 2, uh, and 2, 2, and that's in the mirror Bible. And then it goes on throughout the time, every one of us were wrapped or were warped and corrupted in, in our own conduct, snared in jumble and forbidden lust, mm -hmm. driven by the desires of the senses, uh, completely engaged in expression of life ruled by mind games. If it was, if a twisted passion parent, parented of global breed of people, <laughs> you know? And so where I want to go with this is, is I was studying a little bit and we've talked about, there's a little bit, and there might even be something before the Hebrew language which I was studying called the Merkaba. And I don't know if anybody knows what, what the Merkaba is. It's a star of David. It's actually a, it's a tetrahedogram. And it's a pretty cool thing about how this geometry of, of science actually brings, brings us into being a better people. That was kind of the thought of the Jewish. It was before supposedly the actual Jewish and Hebrew languages. And so anyway, I want to go to the Hebrew. And when we're talking about like Chet Chet and Noon Noon, what is on the end of letters, it's on the end of like a 
alaf. We were talking alaf, alef, bet, resh, and all these alphabetical words. And when you get to like noon, noon, it means it goes back to like noon would be there's a there's a way in the physical, but the spiritual it brings the form of it. And so first is it first the spiritual and then the natural. And so the first covenant is based on the physical. It's of the water. We are born in water. We got to have water, but we can't be born in dryness. But in the second, there's dry land. He went out and he went out. Jesus went out into the, the wilderness and there's dry land. And so that's where the, the, the first covenant is the shadow of better things to come. Mm -hmm. So say we didn't have water within the womb to bring a baby to pass. Where can we go? We can go in the dry land. We can go into the spirit place. We can go into the secret place. We can go, and this is what the Hebrews were speaking of, the imagination, the God place where God dwells inside the ark and imagine and, and, and feel this emotion, what it would be like if that, you know, that's prayer. We've all seen miracles, signs, and wonders, you know, and pray, hey, there needs to be water in that womb. We believe it's there because what this really comes down to, you guys, if you believe, it's like this, if you believe, this is my own opinion, if you believe you are a co-creator, but you believe that God Almighty, the source energy of all power, love, and light dwells on the inside of you, and by your, yeah. by your, if you believe that, you are it, you are the chosen one, you are the chosen body to be able to now you believe that. So what you think upon, you become. And it could be, we can say it's good or bad. So think upon these things that are good and lovely and true and of good report and, and what is born of, you know, what is born and, and everything that's good and everything that's it's well. And so what I'm trying to say, it's kind of where I'm going is when we really believe that we are one with source, we are the source in flesh, we are able to then bring signs, wonders, miracles. We, we're the ones that God is using, basically, not even using, I hate to say that, but is teaming up with, so to speak, to show the divinity within and without. And so I want to yeah. say, but that first part of it, and we're going to go through this John 14 later on, it is powerful. If you go through the Bible Hub and look at it, everything it seems like comes back to I am. It's the ego. It's actually your ego in everything that is bringing things to pass within your own life. And that is the hymn. That is the, you know, but there is a father. There is a, the Jesus is the image of us in this yeah. earth. And yeah. we are the image of God. And, and, you know, it's just beautiful. Does this have anything to do with eternal life in the body? Because we're trying to talk about flesh here. You know, the first covenant was really physical. It was, let's see the physical side. The second was more, let's go inside in the spirit where we can change things to make the physical to match our, our, right. Yeah. Our way. But anyway, that's where I want to kind of stop there. Hope I can set it up. I, I'm still not into that whole concept of boy, those people that are, have chosen like their, their fate by, or we have by putting somebody on um, e eternal prison because of where actions, you know, I'd bet you they're not going, oh, I want to live forever now. <laughs> you know, you know, what I, what I think about is really the, the covenant of flesh and the covenant of the spirit were really uh, learned backwards uh, because humankind became familiar with flesh and all of the dictates and desires and passions of the flesh and then begin to try to understand the spirit is almost like detoxing from the flesh and and uh, and learn relearning and embracing that of the spirit oh, so good uh, because before uh, the foundation of the world what happened i'll get you thinking it says the crucifixion happened before the birth yeah because before the foundation of the world jesus was slain yeah, Revelation one from before the foundation of the of the world, uh, uh, he was crucified. Now let me let me read this before I get to Doctor Cindy. The the fact is that we are one with the source of life, and yet each individual is a corporate head 
of its own mindset, which makes up the species known as mankind, and each one can choose which mindset to live by. Now listen, everybody watching tonight, this is very important. I want to let you know, I'm not a, a goofy grace type of person, but I do want to say to you that Father God loves you, whether you live by an at the Adam mind or the Christ mind, and he has planned for you to repent, to change the way you think, and start living by the Christ mind of the fullness of the Godhead. Now, when we talk about life and death when we talk about immortality here's one of the first things this is the scripture the lord brought to my attention uh, after uh, i came home from a couple of hours away my, my mom had uh, we, heard, we had her funeral uh, uh this is the scripture most people will throw at you dr cindy hebrews 9 27 which points out that it's appointed unto men once to die after that the judgment meaning that you've got to die uh then god judges you based on your performance, which takes us right back to the law that we're supposed to be uh, not under, which I'm not a Jew, uh, so I mean, that's I, I never was under the law. Uh, real quickly, Hebrews 9.27, the Passion Translation, every human being is appointed to die once and then to face God's judgment. Now, I know how I feel about this scripture, but I'm just going to throw it out there. Dr. Cindy, uh, good to see you tonight. Go ahead and, and share what's on your heart. Oh, wow. Well, Huh. <laughs> I have so much to say, and I don't want to, um, you know, sound scattered. So just give me a minute. So <laughs> you're asking me about the Hebrew scripture, about appointed wants to die. Well, we already did that on the cross. <laughs> I mean, I already died. Didn't you? I mean, we all say that. We sing it that we were crucified with Christ. You know, this is what the Apostle Paul said. You know, we have been crucified with Christ. He said, I, he said it personally. Mm -hmm. and, and it was an example. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's not I that lives, it's Christ that lives in me. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And, you know, in, in life, there's really no death. And um, I keep going back. There's a couple of things I want to say, but one thing that keeps coming up in my spirit is 2 Corinthians 3, 7, which talks about the ministry of death, which was the law, which is what Dr. Bill just said. None of us were born under the law, guys. We were all born after AD 33, weren't we? I know I was. You know, I was born in, in 1960 which is a good time good many years after the law. And, you know, some people might be tuning in going, I don't understand what you mean, the law. Okay, so as long as the temple was standing in Jerusalem and they were making animal sacrifices, then the law was going on and that temple was destroyed in AD 70. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after AD 70 and on, the law was done away with as we know it. That means the law that Moses and uh, that Moses brought forth. You can read your New Testament and figure this out. But in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 7, it says, But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones, what does that say? The ministry of death was the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The ministry, people go, what? The Ten Commandments were the ministry of death. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, read your Bible. It's what it says. It says, but the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. It wasn't forever. It was leaving. It was passed right. away. Even when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the Ten uh, Commandments, when they saw the glory on his face, it didn't stay there, did it? No, it stayed there and then it waned. And it said it was fading away, fading away. And then it says, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? 
And that's what we're in now. We are in the ministry of the spirit, okay, of the law of life, not the law of death. Yeah. Because yeah. the what? Letter kills. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And what we're talking about here tonight is a spiritual existence. Is when, um, listen, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you bodily. Yeah. That means physical. That means the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the resurrected life of Jesus Christ, dwells in you bodily, physically. So we are endued with the spirit of God. We have been given the spirit of God to keep us alive, to be our life. And so when we lock, you know, we lay hold of this, guys, I, like I said last week in the private chat, I almost chickened out on this topic. You know, when you put it out there, I almost said, oh, let me see what I've got to do. Um, you know, I better go organize my sock drawer tonight, Dr. Bill. I mean, I was going to say I'm scared. I don't want to touch it because I know it's going to freak people out. And I'll tell you why, because of something that came up to me years ago. And they said, well, in the garden. Uh, the five things God said to do in the garden was be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. Mm -hmm. And replenish meant, replenish meant when people die, you're supposed to have babies. That's what we were taught. Replenishing means when people pass away, you've got to have other humans to replace them. So replenish them. And so that's why I was going to check it out. And then Holy Spirit said, no, you get in that panel and you go ahead with that Second Corinthians three about the ministry of death, which right. is the law, and kind of you know shoot this down some. And um, also, uh, this is a little bit off topic, but I think it's pertaining to this. Something that the Lord just told me a couple of days ago, um, which is over in Isaiah fifty three. It's about healing, okay? Healing and um, living forever goes together whether we see that yet or not it does so let's go to isaiah 53 i'm going to just go ahead and tell you what um a lot of bible translations say it says surely verse four surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken smitten of god and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and it says in this particular Bible, and with his stripes, we are healed. Now, we've been misquoting this forever. Everybody I know just about teaches it by his stripes, we are healed. That's not what the original says. The original says with his stripes, we are healed. In other words, with means it's with you ongoing through eternity. It means with means with his stripes are with us. In us. Okay. It wasn't like a one-time event 2,000 years ago. By his stripes on that day, we were healed. But with his stripes, we were healed. Y'all know that the Christian, the new covenant believer, was never expected to get sick. Y'all, this was written under the law. This was written in the old covenant. This was written under the law. Okay. So they were... What, what uh, Isaiah was saying was to them that, that this is so deep that when Messiah comes, he's going to heal all you guys that have, will, will be dead when he gets here. In other words, with his stripes, he will heal everyone past, present, and future. That's heavy. And when you think about the expanse of the stripes of Jesus, and there's more to that. I mean, the cat of nine tails is on the, each one of those uh, end of the cat of nine tails was like the bones of a wolf. Because this was Rome. Rome was, Rome was, listen, huh, the empire, the deep state, if you will, they were the ones that were attacking Jesus and, and putting the stripes on his back. You know, the wolf bones. You know, that represents the empire of Rome. And when you know the history of how Rome started. And so this is what we have to look for when we're looking at 
um, ways for us to renew our minds to grasp the not just the potential of not dying, but really the plan of God. You know, it's, it's even bigger than potential. It's really the plan of God. And all of us are on a learning curve on this because what we're doing is we're taking the Bible at face value. We actually believe in what it says instead of going, well, let's just tweak that up some because that might not. No, 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 no. We're having to look at it and say, well, is it say that or not? And so we're having to come to some uh, terms here. And um, I'm always I'm always one to uh, stand corrected as long as we're on the pathway of truth. And I think it's a good thing that we're doing this because we are we are pushing out the boundaries and Dr. Bill is leading the way. He's our fearless leader. And so um, <laughs> we're glad to be on board and walking this out with you. So good to see everybody tonight. I'm so blessed to be with these amazing men of God. Thank you, Dr. Cindy. Now, just before I get to Pastor Christopher, uh, as uh, as Dr. Cindy was talking about uh, what, what took place at the cross, uh, I, I have come to focus more on the place that the cross was, which was the, the hill uh, called the place of the skull, uh, the place of the mind, the place of, of uh, remembrance. Uh, and Paul said, I was crucified with Christ. And I think everybody probably knows this, but, um, but the word crucified uh, it comes from a Greek word. I'm not going to, I know it very well, but I'm, I'm just going to go on to the meaning. It means to impale on the cross. So, it, it, and, and if you re look at the usage of the word, it's a metaphor. So a metaphor is not the actual thing. So I didn't get stuck with the cross. Paul didn't get stuck with the cross. But metaphorically, the flesh was crucified. What is the flesh? The flesh we think of as our bodies. But our body doesn't have its own desires without the mind, the unrenewed mind. And so it's the mind of the flesh, okay? Uh, but, but here's the thing. Figuratively, here's what the cross did, what crucify means. To extinguish or subdue passion or selfishness wow. that's what the crucifix crucifixion did so when we talk about it's appointed unto everyone once to die after that the judgment uh, i have to go all the way back i've got a book coming out i don't know how quick uh but I i've got a book coming out that actually will explain the entire first chapter of Genesis in the Hebrew language. And, and, and actually, it establishes eternal truth. Now, for me, I stop there. Nothing else that happens in the Bible moves me from eternal truth. Eternal truth says that I was created in the image and likeness of my Father. Eternal truth says I've been given dominion over all the things that God has created. Eternal truth says that he looked at me and said, it is good. I'm not changing any of that. I refuse to think in any other term. Uh, I kind of see the story of the rich man, uh, of the, uh, the prodigal son. Uh, the father didn't worry about the prodigal son when the prodigal son had squandered all of his money and was laying in the pig pen. Um, uh, the prodigal son did his thing, but the father maintained his position. Father wasn't moved. When the son came back, the father remained in his same position. Get out the fatted calf, get the robe, get the ring, put some shoes on his feet. Let's celebrate. It wasn't because the father had, it's because the son now came back and now we're going to, he's saved and we're going to have a party. It was that the father never changed anything about what he had established. That's why I'm trying to focus people on eternal truth. Okay, now, Pastor Christopher, this thing about the law, that Moses founded the law, uh, good or bad, um, it was all about do good, get good, do bad, get bad. Uh, you know what the Strong's Concordance did? The, uh, James Strong tried to make this, uh, that it was literally interpreted as a court trial. But I, I want to just say this here, Dr. Cindy can concur with this, but as a theologian, 
And I don't say that boastfully. I don't have no pride about that whatsoever. But as a theologian, I believe that 1,800 years after the first century, James Strong missed the mark so bad in his interpretation. Because for me, it's kind of like what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5a, that uh, that we are well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. It's kind of like, if I'm not under the controlling power of what I see, hear, and touch, hmm then I just I'm I'm with the Lord all the time. I mean, be in this body, be elsewhere. I'm with the Lord all the time. Uh, so this is such a powerful thing, Pastor Christopher. Uh, just run with it, buddy. Good. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's always an honor to be here with everyone and, and to everyone that's watching. And you're absolutely right. I love what Dr. Cindy shared about uh, about the law having gl glory on it when it was presented, but then. Um, but then, you know, that was is liberating to us has more glory is what she was reading more glory. And as believers, as sons and daughters of God, we have we're living from the more glory. Mm -hmm. What we have does not wane. And, 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 and you're absolutely right. Um, uh, Dr. Bill, in talking in talking in regards to the law, but Paul says something interesting. See, one of the things about death that that um, kept me frightened, if you will, um, and 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 and. And, and I was conditioned in the mindset that when someone passes away, you know, in, in the name of condolences or the name of comforting people, like you know, listen, I'm, I'm really sorry for your loss. Mm -hmm. I'm really sorry for your loss, and, and and it's totally understanding the concept of that, or where it comes from. But Paul makes a striking uh, contradiction to that. He says in Philippians chapter one, verse twenty-one, he says, uh, "To live is Christ, and to die is not loss." Mm -hmm. It is gain. Mm -hmm. It is gain. Amen. And Amen. Amen. I had to look at it. I'm, I'm beginning the process of looking at it from a different, from a different standpoint. So if I was crucified, since I've been crucified with Christ, um, if it's appointed once for man to die, then his death was the once for all mankind to die. All right. Then the judgment. Then now judgment is not something that I'm to be afraid of. OK, um, he, you know, the judgment, whatever judgment that I was ordained of, he did. And so um, the fear of the, the fear of, 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 of being absent from a, the body was looked at as a loss. The fear of being absent from the body was looked at from as a, as a negative standpoint. But uh um, but but the die is gain. <laughs> the, but the but to die is gain. The die is gain. Um, yeah. And 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 it comes from the core belief of of you know you know if you eat of this forbidden fruit you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. You shall surely die. And but Adam lived up to uh, past what what 920, 930 years after this uh, act of. Uh, uh, disobedience, if you will, right? Uh, and so the concept that I was I was trained in 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 in, in, in the religious uh, system that I was up under taught me that every human being after that was mm -hmm. uh, was 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 covered in death and so forth and so on. However, there are contradictions to that in the scripture. You know, you have mm -hmm. Enoch that never tasted it. Mm. Never tasted that. You had Elijah that never tasted that. And 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 and, and there are glaring contradictions to um, I think that's worth pursuing. So you go into the book of James, the Bible says that Elijah was a man of subject to like passions as we were, right? Um, so there was, my point, the point being there was nothing special about him. However, he never he never died, quote unquote, died a physical death. Uh, Enoch, Enoch had Enoch walked with God, and then and then he was no more, and mm. so 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 sinful separation couldn't have been, <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? Um, uh, uh, the reasoning behind this, uh, and so when we when we talk about these things in regards to um, to live as Christ, the, the, to die as gain, when I embrace these things, once again. Um, to embrace these things is to embrace the reality of my eternal identity, my eternal identity. Um, uh, to 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 die. And now this is where my opinion comes in. Um, to die, um, the great gain of that is to be 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 fully without a uh, 
without the, the, the tent of this body to be fully who I've always been. Um, then the question then becomes, Dr. Bill, um, um, you know, it, one has to embrace the limitation of this, this human life. You know, the, the Bible talks about how, our, 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 how God never slumbers nor sleeps, mm -hmm. yet Jesus comes on earth and he's sleeping on multiple occasions. Once, once notable time, the Bible's talking about how he was sleeping during the storm. You know what I mean? It, signifying that there may, there may be a, there's a limitation in this body that he that he had to embrace but 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 once death comes uh or or, or to be absent from the body comes um that the, these limitations that that he and we once had we won't have anymore and so yeah. i yeah. i think the concept um of of death being a loss has got to be revisited um as as born again believers i think that um the concept of us being less than when we die um, has got to be revisited because uh, the limitation of, of, of believing that we are naked will esteem the sensory mechanism, the sights the as the highest level. But, 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 but it's not, no, like Dr. Cindy shared from to the Corinthians church, it is more glorious. It, it is, we are living in the more glorious, even, even here on earth. And so, the, you know, the concept of death um, is not something that we have to uh, be afraid of. I don't, have, right. I, I don't have to be afraid of that. I don't have to be um, concerned about that. Paul said, you know, you know, is it is a benefit if I stay? Um, it's a benefit is a even greater than it's a benefit if I go. You know what I mean? Um, um, mm -hmm. From the residing in this tent, in this physical body. And so um one has to as a believer as a, as a son and a child of god we have to be mindful of uh, the advantage the advantage of, of 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 the resurrection or our identity in christ that covers every scope of the human experience including death including death yeah. um now yeah. uh, before i go I, before i um i want to conclude this discourse with this is that um the reason why i believe uh, death is so, uh, there's such a, a connotation of fear connected to it is because it's the great unknown. Yes. It, it, it is the great unknown. I, I've never been there uh, or or in my senses. I can't remember. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, it's, so it's not something that is something that um, that, 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 that uh, the, the reality of that uh, um, cannot be controlled by the sensory mechanism. You know what I mean? Um, nobody's been there, if you will, from the our, from the living. So, so since since it can't be controlled, there's a great amount of fear connected to it. But but as 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 children of God, our identity our identity could not even which Jesus comes in and demonstrates could not even be held by it. Couldn't even be held by it. Now Lazarus was raised from the dead, if you will, to die again. To, to live, leave the body again. Jesus defeated, the, Jesus defeated this thing and never tasted death again. Uh, 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 and, and, and I have to believe that somewhere in that resurrection is our portion as children of God too. Dr. Bill? Okay, so I, I want to talk about uh, what, what, if somebody real quickly, uh, people that don't want to be revived, what kind of a directive is that called? Um. That advanced do not want to be. Advanced yeah. directive. Okay, advanced directive. Let's go with that. All right. Now, um, my wife and I have a standing order that if our physical being ceases to have life in it, the first thing we do, our standing order, our first directive is to call the other person back. Uh, I, 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 it, because because it's not time, and and uh, I don't know when time is, and uh, but uh, I just I just ain't going nowhere. Now I want to make a couple of uh, say a couple of things that I think are very important tonight, and there's a question that needs to be addressed. But then I'm going to give all of you a closing word. We're uh, uh, we're uh, kind of uh, been long tonight, and that's fine because it's been great. All of your comments and your insight is wonderful. Um, I, I want to read a comment from a student 
Now, I'm currently uh, one of the classes I'm teaching in school is called Investigating Christian Theology, and it's really tearing down the theological perspectives that have really been in error uh, just because we're reading a verbatim uh, from a, 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 a English Bible with, with a literal uh, meaning, which that's really not the meaning. But a student wrote a uh, comment on lesson two. I really appreciate Bishop Dr. Bill and I, I wanted to find a way to read this without using my name, but I, I, I didn't see it. It says, uh, the, the labor of love in going over and choosing the most Christed uh, translations of off, uh, often uh, misinterpreted scripture. On top of that, I am so blessed to read your paraphrased conclusions of the verses. I see that one day, uh, all, with all the different verses studied, we will have a WBSU study Bible. Wow. That's what a student said. Uh, wow. I, I mean, I suppose that I, that's a lot of work. Here, I made my confession that uh, I don't, I don't want to write, to write my own Bible. <laughs> uh, so I, I guess I'm going to have to just listen to what the Lord says. Now, uh, there's a question uh, because what you said. Uh, uh, tonight, uh, uh, one of you or both of you, uh, that uh, that uh, um, you know that the, the benefit of death, uh, the, talking about uh, you know, and and we started with that that death reigned uh, uh, from Adam to Moses as king. Um, you know, I, I want to tell you when Paul said I was crucified with Christ, uh, some place, places read I I died with Christ, um, and so the question is. Without physical death, how can we uh, get the renewed or glorified body? All right, uh, that's a valid point because uh, we're so death prone uh, in our thinking uh, that uh, like Apostle Brett said right at the start, you know, when somebody talk about how would you like to live forever, uh, people, no, nah, I, don't, I don't know about that. It's because we've really not embraced that concept because we've not talked about it much. And, and that's why I think uh, that we really do need to talk about some things that are kind of the untalkable uh, subjects out there. Uh, but, but what I want to say is, is that I'm not gaining anything as into gain in life. What I'm doing is being awakened to that which already is. Now, I don't view that which al al already is at the cross. I'm not dis dissing the cross. I view that which is already is, which is the eternal truth established in pre-creation. And, and just because Adam missed it, and those after him also missed it, because keep in mind, the majority of everybody, if not 100% of everybody in the New Testament, they followed something that we're talking, uh, that we're not to follow, and that was the law. When Paul said, Timothy, you have known the Holy Scriptures from a child, what was he talking about? The Torah. He wasn't talking about the New Testament scriptures. There were no New Testament scriptures till a couple of hundred years later. And, and so we've really taken the literalness of scripture by reading our English Bibles. I mean, I get it. I was raised on the King James Version, the literal scriptures, memorized. How, you, you, that's what we did in Sunday school, poured into kids, you know, uh, uh, memor, memorizing, memorizing scripture. Come every Sunday with your, your scripture that you memorize and get before the class and and say, and we, we get that rooted into us, and still to this day, uh, I, I think about uh, Jesus wept. I know that's the shortest verse in the Bible, but I know that. Uh, uh, Ephesians 6, uh, um, uh, at 10, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And there's so many others that we had drilled into us without understanding what they actually mean. So when Paul is talking here about uh, to be with the Lord, uh, to, 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 to not be controlled by his body is really the issue. You know, to die is gain. Well, to die out to the flesh is where the gain comes in. Uh, I'm not controlled by one thing so that I can enjoy and interact with the other. Paul addresses uh, this, um, uh, and, and here's what I think he's saying. Uh, he's addressing his time when he returned from visibility to invisibility and what people call death. And he, uh, he tells how that he has done what God required of him. Now, I want you to hear this uh, in the appearance realm for mankind. Paul died uh, a very young 
age. He was one of the disciples who died. He died in his 60s, actually. Uh, John died in his late 90s, but uh, or in his 90s. But the fact is that we really have gotten the idea that, hey, to die is gain. Why? My English Bible says so. But let me ask you, what died? Well, Dr. Cindy's right. At the cross, something died. Uh, uh, Apostle Brett's right. In the beginning of time, something died. Christ was crucified, the Lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. Uh, uh, Pastor Christopher is right that there's some stuff that is not on us that don't belong to us, and we've simply embraced it just because, guess what? Our pastor said so. Our preacher said so. Our favorite Bible prophecy teacher said so. I've been there, ladies and gentlemen. I've done the exact same thing. I am guilty. But what I want to tell you is that what I'm learning is that in spite of what my physical body does, in in spite of what my physical body is experiencing, I'm learning to not be controlled by it, not be ruled by it. Because it rains on the just and the unjust. There's stuff that happens every day, just like car accidents, sickness, and death. But that doesn't mean I have to believe in any of them. Do we still believe in divine protection? It's not that I'm looking, and I think one of you talked about this. It's not what I'm believing to happen. I'm I'm praying that, boy, if I get out tomorrow, I'm going to have divine protection. How about understanding that it's something that dwells within you? It's a part of who you are. It's like your suit of armor. Don't don't get up in the morning and put on Christ. Don't (laughs) take him off at night. Amen. And that's what people are doing. We're taking off the the armor of God at night and we're going to sleep. I need my armor all the time. I need who I am to be fresh in my mind, in my thinking, and in my mouth all the time, in my actions. And so I don't think Paul had to die. I just think Paul concluded that uh, I've done everything I'm supposed to do and I can't think of anything else to do. So, hey, I'm done. Well, uh, I respect that, but... uh, can I just honestly say that's not for me? I'm not I'm not going to I am not accepting that I have to die. And I wish I could have shared this with my parents all over again. People of faith, but just didn't understand. They were right here, but they couldn't make that jump. And I and I, my siblings. I remember being on the phone with my brother who was comatose, and I asked the nurse to put it up to his ear, and I didn't pray for him. I talked to him. I talked to him about life. I talked to him about about the cloud of witnesses. I talked to him about the other side, but that he didn't have to go there. Now he went. Probably my other brother that's deceased, my parents may have called him. I don't know. I, I don't understand how it all works yet, but I just know this. I know what's for me. I don't embrace sickness. I don't embrace pain. I don't embrace coronavirus. I don't embrace disaster. I don't embrace tornadoes have to come and destroy a city. People ask my wife and I, why did you move to Joplin, Missouri, when just a few years ago, half of it was destroyed by a tornado? We said, so there won't be any more destruction from tornadoes. That's why we moved here. We actually told places of business that. We're not trying to be braggadocious. We're just saying, look, it ain't going to happen. And I could talk about that. All right. Uh, Closing word, uh, Apostle Brett. I love it. I, it's up. Uh, are we spiritual beings? Yes. I mean, were we, are we spiritual beings manifested in the flesh? Um, is that the choice we made? Or is that the choice God made? You know, you want to go there, you, you decide. If you were part of that decision before in your higher self or, and I love the glorified body thing. Where are we going to get the glorified body? Well, once was, and there is no time, were we in a spiritual realm? You know, and now we're in the earth, the natural realm. And so what I love to say is if we are spirit beings, which I believe manifested in the flesh, spiritual being, spirit is, a. I think, I broke it down. It's like energy. It actually goes back to the quantum, which where all things are possible, which brings a belief system, which is a belief system through the human mind, through the human heart which is, I think, the heart now is the yeah. essence to the new belief, is the new kingdom. The kingdom is without is not observable. But it is observable within, mm-hmm. and it's observable how you want it. So why don't we see the world how we want it? 
Let's see our world how we want it. Let's see it in equality. Let's see it in love. And let's see it in wellness. And let's see it in abundance. And let's see it in success. Let's see it how we want it. Not, not how we don't want it. But yeah. let's see it how we want it. And that's all I really have to say, you guys. I'm, I want to go higher than my physical being. I'm, I'm a spiritual being having yes. an experience. I don't know why. I really don't know why. But if you really sit back and go with I am and ask yourself, now the kingdom is observable when I say I am, me and the maker are one. And I then when I believe that, my belief systems and what I think upon really kind of manifests. Amen. And it seems like that's a manifestation. And that's what I want to bring to the world because that's where I've been attracted to. Even Jesus talked about the law of attraction where two or more to gather together that agree on one thing. It's kind of like the collective consciousness in the energy. And you'd be, and we were talking about that. The more we get around cert, a certain egregore or a certain energy, a certain group think, you know, you can go to Tony Robbins and woo -hoo, get in the, get in the groove and you can go to pastor, you know, Kenneth and you can get, but you'll start having that same energy and that same thought form. And that's what I was getting to that formation. Why does, why do we form a God in our own image? Or is that wrong? You know what I'm saying? So let's form a God in the image that takes care and is well, is well with our soul, is well mm -hmm. with other people, mm -hmm. is well with all humans and all humankind. And the death concept of living, living forever in this physical body. Some days you're like, uh, uh, uh. And then some days it's like, gosh, you just seem to be hitting the mark. You're not missing the mark. You're hitting the mark. And you're like, I can do it. This would be amazing. All the things I have to do in this world. And I'm full of joy and peace and happiness. And my life is great. And I just love to go. And then you get this thought and I'm going to stop. Gosh, I, you know, where does the unworthiness come from? My life is so good. I don't want to lose it, you know? And there you go. Now you, now you put energy into, I don't want to lose it. And there you're like back and forth. So it's like, you are your own creator of your own life. And so I, I really believe there's a way that a person could live on in this energy. Cause all we know that now everything is 99.9% .9 basically energy. And uh, I don't even want to get into the purification of the first 500 years that what the church believes St. Gregory and Basile, they were literally universalists saying, Hey, if there is a hell, we do believe in it. It may be that it's just a purification of light. It's the purification. It's the fire. It's the lake of fire. That's a whole nother teaching, which is actually how the dross gets burned off and Theon, what touches Theon, Theos, which is God, whatever it touches, it turns itself into itself. I think I've been through some of the purification because I asked for it in this life. I said, God, anything contrary to who and what you may be, but I think I was in this, that form of righteousness within my church body. And I was thinking that form of God. And so it burned hard, boy. It was the baptism of fire and it hurt for a couple of years. And it was like, I was absent of God because of my unrighteousness. Now, if I'm rightly justified and I'm righteously justified and I'm already right with God, thank God I'm good and I'm his son and I'm a, I'm a king and I can reign and I all I have to do is, I love what good kings do. And I think good kings go, what do you want, Pastor Chris, Dr. Cindy? It's up to you. Your whole group, you get people together and, and talk to them. And then, and then I'll, I'll, I'll put in that, that rule or that thing that you want, you know, y'all want. I'll then make that reign and rule in your life. And that'll be power within you and for you instead of, I decree a thing, but I think we still can do that within ourselves. And that thing should be life and life more abundantly. Yes. Haven't we had too much death preached in our pulpits? I mean, let's oh. face it. Uh, you know, how are we going to live a supernatural life? Yeah. And then I, you get the glory after death. It's like, oh. He already he already said to his uh, to his father. He said, "The glory that I have, I have given that you gave me, Father. I have given them." Now he said that in the New Testament, but that actually happened in Genesis chapter one. But that that's another story. Okay, uh, Doctor Cindy, uh, a closing word. I like your advanced directives. <laughs> I think they're great. I'm going to do the same thing. I like that. Yeah. Is that it? 
that's pretty much it. I'm just <laughs> here thinking about it. I was just meditating on those advanced directives. <laughs> advanced directives. Yeah, yeah. We said, uh, you know, we don't want to be apart from each other. And so to, for that to happen, uh, there can't be any death. Yeah. And so it, and if something happens to me, you call me back. And, oh, and right. uh, that's, that's exactly right. I like that. Re remember, having heard my dad's voice from the other side is a real encouraging thing. And then Dr. K. Fairchild heard her husband's voice from the other side. And he said, don't give up your body. Yeah. Yeah, I saw some. When my mama passed away, I heard her tell me, Cindy, enjoy your life. And so I interpreted it as like, oh, I better enjoy my life because it's not going to be very long. And then like the Holy Spirit came in and went, did she say that? And I'm like, no. And he's like, she said, Cindy, enjoy your life. She didn't say, oh, you better enjoy your life because it's going to be short. I mean, it's really weird how we have eisegesis, you know. I mean, we read into stuff all the time. <laughs> it's like it's not there or they didn't say that. But oh, we've got our, our way of hearing it. No. I mean, it's like it, got, it was very clear. Enjoy your life. We, we interpret things based on what has been crammed into us so many times. And we really do need to get a fresh perspective. That's why I love things that I teach. I've got, a, a, a I think, a doctorate course coming up uh, soon uh, on uh, uh, the theology, uh, on um, uh, biblical interpretation, proper biblical interpretation, part two. Uh, I love interpreting scripture based on, it takes time. But anyway, okay, Pastor Christopher. And I think it's, the, I think it's, the, um, and I, 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 I thank God for, uh, the people on this panel, people like Dr. Kate Fairchild, and, um, um, and, 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 and that challenged the status quo. But it takes, but to be very honest with you, it takes courage to confront um, these these type of uh, belief systems. Um, they're more. Not only has the church been uh, an assistant to the crime of of of, of oh. esteeming these things. Um, the most, but uh, but it's, but culturally, we are inundated with all of this information. This is right. This is right. This is right. This is right. And you'll subconsciously grow up thinking um, with, in these conditions and agreeing with these conditions. But but even this conversation tonight, I'm listening to what Doctor Doctor Bill, what you said. Like, hey, listen, I I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that. I won't agree with this. I won't agree with that. And, it, and I believe it's just that simple. And in and, and this, and this, these quantum realities that Apostle Brad talks about, once I disagree with, with these, with these uh, uh, streams of thought, I then override them. You know, Christ in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory, if you will. Mm -hmm. I then override these uh these conditionings and 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 you know and you can and, and people can argue that biblically that you know this and any other but you know the scriptures talks about how the old the new covenant is a is is uh is better than the old but Moses was in an old covenant who and his eyesight never grew them if you will oh come okay? on okay um and and so but but I'm 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 living in a better covenant because I'm living in a greater reality or awareness of who I've always been and so um the 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 the, the lie um goes at the core that I have to die to be with God right that's what religion taught me um yeah. they've went on they've went on to be with the Lord oh, my um goodness. So they had to, they had to go to, they had to go to get, they had to go to obtain, they had to be absent from here, to, you know, to finally have, have our God, have, um, be with one with God, you know, um, but that's not the reality. And I think that that, that, that lack of awareness from our oneness um, contributes to an esteeming of, of, of death. Now, that means that um, I've been told that I have to be absent from the body to have a oneness with Christ. When in reality, I have a oneness with Christ <laughs> then and now. Matter of fact, I never, I never lost it. And once again, who told you you were naked? Amen. Who told you you right. were, you know what I mean? 
who told you you were that? And so once again, um, that, that lack of awareness tells me that I have to do something to, to be something. I'm not living from, uh, I'm not living or striving for oneness with Christ. Um, I'm living from it and I don't have to die to obtain it. And so part of, uh, part of the truth is to these, these conversations like this crush these, these suppressing, depressing um, conclusions that a lack, of, a lack of awareness of oneness does. Death only has strength because people do not know their oneness with God already. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so ignorance entitles this lie of the victory of death. But, uh, but I'm thanking God that uh, Dr. Bill and Apostle Brett and, and Dr. Cindy, uh, Dr. K, others that are watching, um, God is raising up people that will not apologize um, uh, for, for knowing their awareness. And I remember working in the medical field and we would have people who, um, whose family members would say, should this person pass away? Uh, they have a, a DNR, do not resuscitate. Do not resuscitate. Well, the truth of the matter is I've already been resuscitated. Yeah. Right? Amen. I've already been resuscitated Woo! and we just going to roll from there. Dr. Bill. Oh, come on. So, so good. You guys, uh, you know, you know, here's the thing. Nobody can tell you what you can or cannot believe. No one. And, and let me just say this. No one has the right to do that. Uh, you know, I, I believe that I can, I can, my belief system can be as strong or as weak as I choose for it to be. Uh, you know, you know, here's what happened to me. Okay, this may not be your experience, but I literally, there was uh, several years ago, I literally had to shut everything out. That meant all Christian television, radio, um, 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 commentaries, uh, uh, prophecy Bibles, uh, favorite preachers. I had to shut it all out. And I just had to just just to listen, and I had to hear Holy Spirit's voice within me. I learned a lot about hearing the voice of God, and um, you know it's really changed my life. And and now I can listen to anybody and about everything and not be moved by it. It, it doesn't mean that I have reached perfection. I, there, I, perfection is in me, okay? Uh, but it doesn't mean that I've I've got to the hundred percent mark. It just means that I know where I am, and because I know where I am, I know what's happening in my soul. That unrenewed portion is is decreasing more and more and more and more. And you know what the whole point of it is? Why the soul is renewed? Your mind is renewed is so that your soul and your spirit look exactly exactly alike which is the marriage supper the joining of the lamb and the bride yes yeah all right guys uh everybody watching so many good comments um so many people talking about uh people getting uh, 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 uh calling their spouses back from the dead there's people that have gotten bodies out of out of uh, the ground out of uh, uh out of caskets uh, call them back and they they were resurrected back to life it doesn't always work i told you about praying for a man that was clinically dead and i just turned from the man and ministered to the family and the man came back to life about an hour later uh, I didn't, I wasn't trying to be a show off or do anything, so I just focused on the family. I'm just telling you that if you're sitting out there tonight saying, how do I know if it will work? You know, people would t told us one time in a church and said, well, what if it doesn't work? And my wife said, but what if it does? Amen. Okay, what, pray for the sick. Get, 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 do whatever. Encourage people in the faith. Uh, call the dead back to life. Uh, if you don't feel like you can do that, then don't do that. But at the same time, the day will come where you will be challenged to call your, your child back or you call your spouse back. Um, I'm telling you. Uh, uh, I just I, I don't see any evidence that death was in the creation was the creation concept. I have studied Genesis chapter one so much that I just can't find death there. You know what I find? Life. So how are we going to get this thing by experiencing death? No, by experiencing life, the Christ life, the God life, the life of the source 
of all things in you. That's how this supernatural presence, and, and, I, and I could talk about that. That's, that's a powerful thing. Hey, I love you all. Uh, thank you, panel. Powerful tonight. Everybody watching, great comments, uh, great participation. We love you all, and we will see you um, uh, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time for the book of Joshua, finishing up chapter 5. Uh, 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 Wednesday night, Thursday night, uh, Apostle Brett Erickson is going to be my guest on Kingdom Dynamics. I, I've got to get Dr. Cindy on there soon. Um, uh, also, I've just been, been uh, just got so many people that have been on. Uh, but uh, also, Friday, um, um, Chaplain Shane Gabbert will be back with me. Uh, and so much, so much good stuff, so many wonderful topics. I mean, what are we preaching? Life, life, life. life. That is the answer right there. Love y'all. We'll see you next time. Have a great evening, everybody. Bye-bye. Life. Life. That's it. Daba daba. Y'all gonna do one of them reels pretty soon on Facebook or Instagram? When the sun goes down.